Well, you're. Oh! I'm not even going to wall. Here we go. For the past few days I've been getting these visions, visions for some sort of game. They've kept me so busy that all I've been eating are meal replacement bars, high in protein, low in taste. It was time to make a change. As of recently it began to snow again. The perfect chance for me to cool my mind. I had high hopes that this would clear my visions. And that's when it happened again. I slowly started drifting into another vision. Where am I? Oh no, what is this place? It's so big! Wait, what's that? Oh, that looks cute! Oh wait, maybe that's not that cute at all. Oh, I gotta run! Oh, oh no! Did I lose them? Where are they? Whew, I think it's fine. Hey there! Okay, eh? What? Bro, is that you? No, it are, is not. Are you a holy man? I sure am. Oh my god. I got a quest for you. I must make it the game. I need to make this game? Yes. These are the requirements. Are these the requirements? Yes, they are. Go oh. catch them. Oh! Whoa, that's quite a list. It sure is. Go forth and make okay. it. Okay. I'll go now. Let's get to it. So, wow, that was quite a dream. So apparently for this week's devlog video, we're going to have to make a multiplayer tanks game. Pretty cool. So now we're gonna have to move from our standard moving character in our demo scene from the last devlog to making a fully blown multiplayer matchmaking robo game. Hey, hey Rob, come here, come here for a second. I gotta yeah. tell you something. You were in this dream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob, Rob. Hey, listen, I, I gotta tell you something. You were in this weird dream of mine. I was? What dream and when did you dream about this? Yeah, remember that we filmed on the balcony? Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> when I froze my head off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that dream. And then in the dream, I gave you a list of requirements. Right? Oh, yes. Like you, this. Oh, magic list of requirements. Yes, that's true. Okay, so this means that for this week's episode, we're gonna have to do create tanks, create a tank arena, Create some user interface to connect to each other. Tank animations, arena animations and events. Sound effects, guys. The overall gameplay of a tank, like a tank, you know, it has to drive, it has to shoot and turn and all that. And then uh, we have to do all the multiplayer matchmaking for this uh, week's episode. And we have to make this entire game multiplayer ready, Rob. Uh, yeah, we do. And they say that's one of the most difficult things to do. Or is it? Challenge accepted! Hey. Hey. Okay, so where do I start? I mean, how difficult can it really be, right? All networking really is, is like just sending some data over to each other so that every single client is in complete sync with minimal to a hundred of second delay. And all gameplay code not only has to run on the client, but also on the server and send back to all the clients to be completely, perfectly, reliably replicated. You got this, right? Uh, yeah, 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 I got this, I got this. Okay. No problem, Good no day. problem, Let, uh, I'm gonna get started. First thing I gotta get started on is setting up our matchmaking, because without matchmaking, how else are we supposed to play against each other? In multiplayer video games, matchmaking is the process of connecting players together for online play sessions. For our game, I decided to go with the Steam Online subsystem so that Rob and I and any other player can connect to each other using peer-to-peer -peer sessions, in short, P2P networking. This means whoever hosts the game is also the server. 
The server of the game, like the name suggests, serves the other players, also known as peers, and what it serves those players is data, their data, and all the data of all connected players to the server. Another popular model for networking games is what is called a dedicated server. In this case, the players are all clients and some machine somewhere on the world is dedicated to serving up all connected players' data. The plus point of a dedicated machine is that dedicated machines are often equal to quality performance, meaning low latency, but they also come with a price since you have to pay for running the machines. For this particular reason, I chose to start with a peer-to-peer -peer setup as it is completely free of charge. Peer-to-peer, -peer, however, just like a dedicated server model, is performance dependent on its hardware. This means that if the hosting player has bad hardware or internet, the rest of the connected players could be affected by this with high latency, also known as lag. But like I said before, peer-to-peer -peer is free, so that will have to do for now. That being said, let's get started. With the matchmaking functional and players being able to join each other's sessions, we moved on to creating the actual tank game. First thing we did was come up with some simple ideas of what we wanted this tank game to be like. When we were younger, we played an online game called Robot Rage. We took some inspiration from that and agreed that we wanted a cool looking arena filled with dangerous obstacles. For example, a fire spewing plate, a spike pit, hammers, and a moving blade saw. Once we sketched out our IDs, I hopped straight into Blender to get started on our first tank, the turret tank. And in the meantime, Wim got to work in our engine on realizing the turret tank script to make the tank able to drive around and fire projectiles. But because he had not received my 3D models yet, he used his own little testing tank, which was uh, rather funny looking. Now that my tank was working and shooting, Rob chipped me his first version of his turret tank and I got started on implementing my tested tank code on the new tank and giving networking a try. Yeah. Okay, I'm also gonna press E. I'm gonna press E. Here we go. Hey, I'm a tank! <laughs> shoot, 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 shoot. My most challenging part was getting my aiming script to work. How I did this is that I checked the position of my mouse, which I then converted to a location in world space, which I then used as a value, which I wanted my turrets to rotate to every single tick. This all worked fine in single player, but as soon as I tested it in multiplayer, it did not work that fine though, since it was now controlling every single tank around me. After some googling and some uh, hair pulling, <laughs> I basically figured out what my problem was and that was that I was basically not checking whether or not my pawn, so my tank, was locally controlled or not, resulting in my tank script running on all tanks, so yes, also tanks that were owned by other online players. And I was able to do this because I am the server, so I have authority over other players. Next, I worked on setting up the driving animations, which Rob had delivered, and then we gave everything a quick test in multiplayer. With the first tank finished and working, I got started with the other variations of the tank, while Wim figured out how players could take control of their tanks. The other variations of tanks included a spinning blade tank, a tank with a hammer, and a spike tank. Wim wanted a system so that the player could easily switch back and forth between controlling their tank, or their player character. And to make this look more interactive and nice in the world, we wanted a kind of a panel to which a player could walk up and interact with. This way a player can easily switch between controlling their character or their tank. Yep. Once Rob was finished with modeling and texturing the tank variations, I got to work on making them functional. Since I already had the third tank functional and I now figured out what not to do in multiplayer, I could simply duplicate my movement script and only had to make the blade spin and hammer move up and down script work over the network.
Hey guys. Hey guys. Okay, so now with all four tanks assembled, there's basically only one more thing left for us to do, and that is to assemble our epic arena. And of course, our epic arena contains multiple obstacles. For example, there's a hammer that can slam your tank down. There's a fire trap. There's also a pit with spikes underneath That's it. That's my favorite. Doors. The and death pit. Yeah, there's one more. It's the saw blade which moves along a rail. So yes. instead of just telling you guys about it, let's show you guys. Roll the montage. Let's go. I'm in the arena. 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 i Don't hide behind the wall there. Whoa, I got you. You're so slow, baby. The rest of the day. It tank versus blade tank. Here we go. They were low break. They were low break. Ah! Ah! Oh, watch out for the blade. Whoa. Okay guys, so that's the end of the video. We did it. We made a multiplayer tanks game in one week. We hope you liked it. And if you did, please hit the like and consider subscribing. That helps us out a lot. And yeah, like basically there are no scoring system in the game yet yeah, or damage system. There's a couple of things that need some improvement. You yeah. might have noticed that from our video, but overall we got a whole lot of systems to work and that's a big step because we all did all of this in only one week. We had so, a limited amount of time and I think we managed to make a pretty cool looking game. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to see more or if you want to learn how I set up this whole complete Steam stuff, then just leave a comment down below and I will get started on the Steam tutorial. So so anyways guys, if you have any more requests for any videos you want to see or any tutorials you want us to make, then be sure to leave your comment down below and we can actually start working on making those videos for you. Exactly. That's it guys for this week. We hope you enjoyed the episode and see you in the next one. Goodbye.